A few days ago, I started becoming really fascinated with seeing how um, people kept like filling in with thought what nothing or what meaningless or what no you really meant or even non-duality. So when we say no to something, when we negate something and then say what that something is, we're sort of pointing to and pointing away from at the same time. It's exactly like, don't think of a pink elephant. So even though these teachings are showing what's false and they are the most direct to, to say no to something, to negate it, is the most direct thing you can do, it also can like shoot down like all the mind's kind of hopes and then leave you nowhere and oftentimes we sink really really fast so um it's trying to show what's false it's trying to show what an illusion is so if you see water in the desert and you're like you know in a really good frame of mind and you have a ton of water and food with you and you're out there for a hike and you like you know where you're on the trail and everything it's like wow that's a cool mirage, that's a cool illusion. And it like doesn't really make much of a difference if you think it's an illusion or not. And you're also much more in a place to like see that it's an illusion. And if somebody points out, oh, that's not really real, that's an illusion, you'll be like, oh, cool. But if you're lost in the desert, if you're suffering, if you're really, really thirsty, really hot and tired, and you see water ahead, and it becomes your hope, and you continually, like in the cartoons we watched as kids, you're continually like walking towards like getting further, more lost in the desert, going into that water. Even though somebody is doing you a huge favor because you're continually like walking further into the desert to try to get to it, even though they're doing you a huge favor by saying, that's an illusion, stop doing it, you're stupid, <laughs> you um, will not thank them at first. You will feel horrible. You will feel like all your hope is lost. You'll feel like that's, I'm not saying you will. But that's often like where we go. And so it was kind of funny, the time frame of this, how I started like seeing it everywhere and seeing how common of a pitfall this is. And then I ended up like in the thick of it and all this like stuff that I had been holding on like hope to in various ways came up. Um, and I, at the same time, I found in the Tao it's not actually in the Tao. It's in the inner teachings of Chuang Tzu. I can't pronounce things. We won't mention that. Oops. See what I did there? But this is just brilliant. And this is like one of those like um, sort of like Zen koans or parable things that everyone's like, what does that mean? What are you saying? And it kind of like explains the point of like, being vague and having like these weird sort of parables or riddles. It like, it goes meta on it. And I, I absolutely love it. To use a finger to illustrate how a finger is not a finger is not as good as using something other than a finger to illustrate how a finger is not a finger. To use a horse to show how a horse is not a horse is not as good as using something other than a horse to show, show how a horse is not a horse. Now, of course, <laughs> he's not talking about a horse in that. He's talking about you. And so when we say there's no you, we're being incredibly direct and yet also incredibly deceptive. And so often we create this sort of like vision of a void. We have to like create this sort of object or create this sort of meaning because we can't imagine meaningless. And that's why this is so hilarious to fully appreciate. Everybody has a connotation to the word meaningless or almost everybody that's like really negative and hopeless. It's meaningless. <laughs> no, it's meaningless. It doesn't have a meaning. 
<laughs> which means like more accurately I could point to and this is where the direct teachings don't go to because you can turn this into another hope you can turn this into like the water in the desert but the actual meaning of meaningless again I'm being like super dangerous and deceptive here is like complete creative freedom and not even that because you could impose the meaning on complete creative freedom or like no um, infinity or nothing to hold it back. Zero is infinity. You could impose a meaning on on creative freedom that like you're responsible for this or some sort of limitation. You could do even that. And so you get to this sort of like um, problem to kind of figure out where it's like, okay, so I have this stuff that I need to let go of, but if I actually like focus on this object that I need to let go of, or this, it's not actually an object, it's a thought, but you know, whatever. You, if I focus on this, I'm, I'm doing that. I'm like, a horse is not the best thing for showing that a horse is not a horse. So another analogy, <laughs> Again, like this is all I do basically is like like talk about objects that have nothing to do with the what I'm really trying to teach, which is exactly how spiritual teachings work. But so um the KonMari method. So it it sounds like I'm totally going off on some sort of tangent here, but it's very applicable. So the life-changing magic of tidying up. She talks about minimalism in like it's an amazing kind of breakthrough way. So I had gotten into minimalism years before I read her book and to me it was like okay I want to have a minimalist lifestyle. I realized that simplicity equals happiness, so I have to have simplicity. So objects don't make me happy, but my idea of simplicity is going to make me happy. So at that time in my life, that was my new hope. So I um, would like, I'd go through my yearbooks and I'm like, ooh, bad high school memories. Like I'm kind of embarrassed about reading some of these, um, like the people who sign these and in the trash, all of them in the trash. And I regret that. However, in this moment, I'm really thankful for the lesson that throwing away my high school yearbooks inappropriately without feeling and emotion taught me. So again, nothing is lost and nothing is wasted. But what um, Marie Kondo teaches you to do is to really focus on what you do want. And so when you know the feeling of something like a piece of clothing that you really love and you sort of attune to that feeling, then you are much better able to recognize the things that do not feel that way, the things that you want to let go of. And the other thing she has you do is when you determine that there's something that you want to let go of, you thank it because it taught you what you do want. So even if you like really overpaid for this item that you never used and it like stayed in the back of the closet and it caused you a whole bunch of guilt and took up space whenever you saw it, but you never felt like you really wanted to deal with it right then, which is the kind of like paradox we're dealing with is like dealing with the fact that you are an illusion, but also not making this a new standard to hold yourself to. So you that you actually thank that item for teaching you, okay, this is something I didn't want. It helped me to define what I do want more. And you actually appreciate the lesson that was there for you. So when we don't do this, the danger is we realize that the water in the desert is an illusion. And we realize that we have to turn around and head back to get out of the desert. 
and we realize we we know the actual direction but instead of just taking that direction we so often are kind of tempted to be like i'm such an idiot i just want to give up like right here and this is kind of like <laughs> um what can come over you when you really start to see things that you kind of um were just holding on to that were not serving you whatsoever even though in reality this is an amazing opportunity to like clear some space and define what you really want often we kind of create that self behind it and sort of like shame it and feel it to be lacking in some way and i'm not sure why exactly this happens um but if you can if you can kind of like see how this all works ahead of time it can be helpful although when you're like really in that place it's one of the best things to do is to kind of like drop it and make your um like like just sort of take a rest um until you're feeling better about things in order to think more clearly about them so i have this an ex example and it's kind of again like the horse example it's kind of an random arbitrary example of my life of just how this sort of like connotations or attachment ended up happening and this is a really mild one and never caused me any suffering but i think a lot of people can relate to it and you can also kind of like use it um is an example to see how like the things that really do become like attachments like the you see that hope you see that water ahead you see the thing that is holding you away from the present moment because that's that ahead of you is the thing you keep like going to believing that your happiness lies there um so when i was a kid my parents cooked like my mom cooked really pretty really healthy meals every night and we never went anywhere and like we had i had a really healthy upbringing because i had tons of outdoor time it was just there was very little like social interaction and we didn't go anywhere or get out i was like an unsocialized puppy so when we did go somewhere which was rare and um like the nearest restaurant was like 20 30 minutes away the nearest mcdonald's was that far away and the nearest shopping mall was two hours away so when we did go somewhere they would always just to save time and make life simple and because they didn't really like to go places and were kind of stressed out they always went to mcdonald's so when I was a teenager, I realized that I had sort of got this amazingly like romantic connotation about McDonald's because it was like the bell with Pavlov's dogs. It was the one constant on like the exciting days for me, days I got to go do something that I never got to do or go see something that I didn't usually get to see. So when I got to high school, I realized like that my perspective <laughs> was very naive and innocent and limited. And I had friends whose parents didn't cook who would like last minute go to McDonald's several nights a week, like friends who were overweight, who just thought the food was disgusting, but ate it anyway, because that's what was offered to them. And they showed us the Super Size Me documentary in health class. And I was like, huh, like my whole view of McDonald's, like whether it, the marketing helped too, but also my like experience with it. And it was never that I loved the food that much. It was just this like constant thing when we went places. And so what we do often is like go back and demonize that thing and like I could blame my parents or blame um and we like we sort of as a culture turned McDonald's into this like cliche example the scapegoat because they were the most like prevalent easy example to point at 
to this greater problem of like lack of health consciousness and lack of taking time to make healthy meals and have um have like healthy choices available for people and this is still a problem but whenever we like demonize a particular thing we're missing the actual root of the problem and we're trying to let go of the thing in a way that um <laughs> that is really like short-sighted and sloppy because we're we're that perpetuates the self behind it and so what these teachings do is like go behind and go behind and then when there's no you the the thing that can come up is you being at fault for mistaking the illusion and like going back to the mcdonald's thing that's how i was brought up that's the family i was raised in we were taught that there are selves and that we should be ambitious and that our hopes and goals lie in the future. We are taught this in school. Like we can go back and demonize the society for teaching us this way, but this is of no help whatsoever. All we have is right now. We can't blame an illusory self in the past for thinking that there is an illusory self because that illusory self is right here, right now. There's no meaning <laughs> behind meaningless. And this really, like when you get around to it is the, the exact freedom and the exact happiness you want. And your mind is just like, huh, <laughs> she can't do anything with it. So it tries and that's all it is. So don't, don't, don't fault yourself for believing in a self.